Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. On behalf of everyone at RevIO, I would like to thank you for joining us today. Before we begin the presentation, I would like to go over a few housekeeping items. First, audio will automatically come in through your computer speakers. However, if you're having trouble using your speakers or unhappy with the quality of the sound, you can also dial in via the phone number and access code listed on the screen. A recorded version of this webinar will be emailed to you within two weeks. Lastly, we will be having a Q&A session at the end of the event, so please submit your questions throughout the presentation using the GoToWebinar control panel at any point during the live presentation. For those of you just joining us, welcome. Today, Miriam Libinati from 2600 Hertz will be sharing strategies for building a UC platform to scale with your business. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Miriam. She is the Head of Marketing Strategy and Development at 2600 Hertz in San Francisco, California. She has worked in tech for over 13 years at companies such as Oracle, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Although only two years into the UC landscape, she has a strong passion for staying engaged in cutting, end, cutting edge industry trends, understanding the fundamentals of technical evolution across communications, and exploring the world of unified communications at various levels. She graduated with a focus on business marketing strategy and communication, and has recently started exploring more technical ventures to better understand the technical mechanisms that makes up the world of unified communications and telecom. And now I'll turn it over to Miriam. Thank you so much, Olivia. Uh, good day, everyone, and thank you so much for joining. Uh, so today, like Olivia said, we'll be talking through kind of different systems, anything from open source to UCAS, and just gain a deeper understanding of how new and evolving technologies are emerging um, and how to help identify platforms that will help you scale your business in the world of communications today. Uh, next slide, please. So let's do a brief kind of run through of what we'll be highlighting today. I'll obviously tell you a little bit more about myself, although I feel Olivia did a great job. Um, experience, technology, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, we'll do a quick past to present recap of unified communications and some of the challenges that businesses of all sizes are facing uh, with the major providers and their segments, uh, specifically into areas such as open source and some of the prominent as a service offerings. Uh, we'll dive into some trends uh, that analyst and data is telling us about the future of UCAS and CPAS. Um, and we'll also go through some key evaluators that you can use to help evaluate your service offerings and technologies. So let's get started, shall we? Uh, so like Olivia said, um, I've been working in tech for about 13 years, maybe about 13 and a half. Um, and I've worked across platforms, anything from planning and forecasting technologies, social platforms, marketing analytics, um, but really only had about two and a half years in communications. Uh, but it's been such an incredible journey to dive into. Um, really, it was joining 2600 Hertz that kind of invoked my passion for learning more about this industry because there's so many intricacies and in not only the telecom, but just the communications landscape. Um, my intrigue kind of continues to, to grow and learning these different pieces, uh, especially being in marketing. We're trying to kind of always stay ahead of the game. Um, a brief intro to 2600 Hertz. Essentially, it's a cloud-based um, highly scalable communications platform that it essentially can be customized in various ways depending on your business need. Uh, we host customers of all sizes um, and they essentially can scale and manipulate our technology as they need to, um, essentially accommodating the changing technologies and new integrations that are specific to their size, their industry, and their customers. Um, so the goal of the webinar today is hopefully to provide you some insight that can help you better understand the difference uh, as, as a service tech, uh, offerings, excuse me, uh, the similarities and differences of how these trends are shifting um, and how we're really going into true integration and what that means. Uh, next slide, please. So essentially in my world, I need to know the market inside and out. And it feels like trends are changing week by week. At least it seems that way anyways. Uh, so I always found gaining a deeper understanding of how technologies has evolved over the years really helps create a clear picture uh, while also helping to identify new trends and opportunities that should be the focus for your specific business. So I figured we'd take a short trip down memory lane to pretty much 
appreciate where we started and kind of what's happened over the last 70 plus years. Uh, next slide, thank you. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure you guys come from kind of various segments of the business, um, but the journey of communications should be something that you're at least somewhat aware of. Uh, so obviously telephony kind of came into scope in the 1940s, and that was when the concept of PBX evolved. Uh, technology was on the rise going into 1980s and 1990s, voice messaging, IVR, uh, VMX, that type of stuff was emerging around 1985, and this appeal was only growing. Uh, when you get into the mid-1990s, around 1995, 2000, uh, unified messaging really gained momentum. Uh, the blend of telephony, audio, video conferencing, and mobile functionality definitely was paving a new path. Um, voice control was big, follow me, those were things that were all kind of popping up around that time. Getting into kind of the mid to later 2000s, 80% of a lot of the new corporate lines were essentially VoIP lines. Uh, larger companies started to shift away from like just the traditional PDX. Getting into later 2000s and into up until about what 2010, 2015, uh, we're seeing a lot of these features emerge at a rapid pace. Um, and this was creating the foundation for the fundamental sense that we're actually basic today. Conferencing, recording, screen sharing, all the stuff that everyone really needs to provide an offering and a solution to their customers. I mean, really, in short, the past decade has introduced so many opportunities and really provided us with a unified offering or unified concept. Um, so why should this matter? You're probably asking yourself that. Well, with technology constantly evolving, the speed at which the market has been growing is moving double time, especially over the last 10 years. So even though the foundation on which technologies are run is deep rooted and actually some may say antiquated and fairly concrete, the features and the functionality that run on top of these infrastructures are rapidly evolving. Therefore, in order to ensure that your business stays ahead and is constantly changing or is constantly evolving with a changing landscape, businesses need to ensure that they are focusing on solutions that can scale and adapt. Next slide, please. So if you're kind of deep rooted and you know the communication industry pretty good, uh, you know that there are so many pieces. And I, I from conversations I have at events uh, to customers and uh, different folks I talk to, uh, they don't even really dive deep enough to understand how compartmentalized it really is. Um, it's really beneficial to understand the major as a service offerings uh, to make sure you can truly encompass beyond the surface level of how the customer experience is shifting. So I'll do kind of a brief run through some of the basics. Obviously there are so many as a service names and acronyms you'll see out there. So I just picked a couple that I've noticed across various uh, industries, um, and uh, resellers, service providers um, that were kind of consistent across. So OpenCore is obviously one that um, I think at a larger scale business you don't see as often, uh, but I found as more prevalent in kind of the small to mid business world. Um, but this essentially allows you to create your own adventure. Um, really it's a plethora of APIs and the capability to utilize your de developmental skills to kind of create the platform the way you like it. Uh, CPAS, which I'm sure you're very well aware of, that's been a very big hot topic, um, is really just APIs that are controlling the future. People really want to dive in there and customize the experience. They're getting to know their customer more and utilizing the communication channels that they, they work with. Um, and UCAS, I'm sure you're well aware of, um, is obviously the collaboration uh, suite and the different offerings, seamless integration, and making sure that your customers stay connected in a variety of ways. Uh, next slide, please. So let's dive into these a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna start it with open source. So essentially, in this crazy world, um, we often underestimate the open source technologies. Typically, individuals using these systems, such as Asterix and FreeSwitch, um, among others, have heavy developer technical skills and a good understanding for manipulating APIs um, and experimental curiosity in, a unique, in a different ways. Um, typically, resellers and communication enthusiasts uh, utilize these technologies or telecom hobbyists. Um, I notice these typically veer into small, mid-sized businesses, like I mentioned. Um, although there may be a player or two in the UCAS space that run open source platforms, and you have no idea that they do, but I'll let you guess you. Um, there are some pretty incredible benefits, though, of open source, uh, which include things such as complete flexibility. Uh, essentially to create your platform and experience using the APIs and 
utilize your community for shared best practice and different documentation pieces. Um, in essence, you also have free support via the different forums and doc sites. Uh, typically, you can find support resolutions, best practice sharing, code contribution, um, and this really allows you to solve problems and work with others that are kind of working in the same systems. Um, another major point of appeal is essentially there's little to no cost to invest in these. Uh, this allows for those tinkers and kind of small businesses to play and create and really get a feel for with the functionality of APIs. Now, as always, there's always benefits and always challenges, depending on how you approach these things. So on the challenges, there's obviously going to be a heavy need for technical and coding skills. So if you're more on the business side, this is going to be a lot more challenging for you to actually take on. Um, another kind of, I wouldn't say a perk would be, would be giving folks that everyone is sharing their findings and developments. Um, so there's probably a lot of duplicated data, which is essentially going to limit the competitive advantage that you would want to have against your competitors. And although the shared and collaborative approach provides a ton of support and referenceable information, not all support issues can be easily answered. And if urgent issues arise, there's no dedicated support team that can help solve the problem. So if it's a severe customer issue, your customer may be in trouble and then you start facing some challenges. Pretty much all of these challenges are going to result in high business risk that would severely impact your customer experience and loyalty. So let's dive into something a little more structured. Uh, next slide, please. All right. So we're going to dive into UC and UCAS, um, and I'll explain a little bit more as we go. So the UC and UCAS solutions we all know and love are the, what we are most familiar with. Um, we're used to big players such as Broadsoft and Metaswitch, um, even down to the smaller guys like Cordial and Mitel. The platforms are typically used for B2B or B2C businesses of all sizes, therefore offering a variety of different communication and collaboration offerings that tailor to the needs of your business. I know in the reseller world, it's usually small to mid-sized businesses, you'll typically hear about Cordell or Mitel or Ring Central, and those are kind of the leaders in the path. Um, there are a ton of other solutions, so don't quote me on those being the only ones, but that would take much longer to go through. Uh, for the larger service providers, uh, those are typically looking for more global or larger opportunities. Uh, you'll hear the broad sauce, the meta switches, the bias. Um, so it kind of spans a plethora of, of different UCAS providers, but it's all going to be geared towards, one, your business side, and then how you're going to use the business. Um, so. I'm sure that you're well aware of a lot of the great benefits with UC and UCAS solutions, um, such as there are a variety of providers, like I just said, advertising, offering, uh, just a plethora of different collaboration services. So essentially, you can pick and choose exactly what you want, um, and you're not limited to just one or the other. You can figure out if you want on-prem or cloud, um, and kind of pick and choose based on your budget and all the other necessities. Um, and Given the need, sorry, excuse me. Given the need to ensure a complete and collaborative customer experience, uh, the market is filled with a variety of services that can be bundled as well. Uh, so you're not just plugging and playing with a multitude of companies. You can also find platforms that allow you to bundle, bundle all of your services in one and make it an easy plug-and-play offering. Uh, with the UCAS offerings, uh, you typically have the upper hand on staying aligned with the new and innovative functionality that seems to be constantly growing in the cloud technology space. Now, like most things, again, um, there's going to be some challenges that come to this. Uh, when you get into the larger scale side, the larger companies, uh, the investment costs are going to be really extreme. Um, and you're going to spend some time on implementation. And depending on the business needs and customiz customizations, you can end up with projects that are taking six months, eight months to a year to get set up, just to get up and going, um, which can set you back and obviously hurt your revenue. And really, let's be honest, with all the M&A activity, uh, the reality is a lot of these technologies are often reliant on several other technologies um, or a multitude of partner technologies, which leaves you reliant on others to make sure that you're not only your business, but your customers are happy. I mean, the, the list can go on and on, um, but really, you're going to find the best solution in what you're looking for. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so now let's dive into essentially one of the hottest, and I feel a little bit overhyped terms in the market, CPaaS. Um, now, let's start by really identifying what this is. CPaaS is essentially APIs. Uh, and in the case of Twilio, 
they've taken and simplified the ability to use these APIs to control a telephony platform and functionality. That is incredibly cool. I'm not denying that whatsoever. Uh, the great thing is, is folks can jump into the CPAS platforms without having to have the low-level detailed experience working with SIP and other telco te technologies. And really, it's a more modern way of interacting with the phone system, which is allowing for real-time event management, which is pretty powerful. Um, the power of CPAS is giving you the control of your calls in a way that makes sense for your business needs. Obviously, it lets you access info outside of your phone system, so think in your CRM or other databases. Um, and this allows you to make decisions on how to route particular calls, uh, letting you build robust applications on top of your phone network. Uh, companies such as Twilio, Nexmo, Zing, and others essentially offer this type of technology. Um, and it's really easy to get excited and jump into, um, and that's obviously what they're targeting. Um, this is a great plug and play type event. Uh, Twilio knocked this out of the park. They made it easy as really one, two, three. Um, and obviously, I think in human nature, as, as simple and easy as we can make it, we're obviously more inclined to get involved with it. And like I mentioned a moment ago, uh, CPAS offers a modernized way to interact with the phone system, allowing real-time event activity and innovative new ways to play with the web, RTC, and SMS. So it's a new way to engage with collaborative tools in your own way. For example, some companies utilize these technologies to gather customer data to make a more customized experience. Um, a use case would be Allstate. So essentially, a customer calls in. Uh, the Allstate agent receives a pop-up window, and this hosts all the history and conversations during the customer's life cycle. So all the previous calls are captured, and the agent is then able to create a more personalized experience, leaving your customers feeling valued and not just like they're talking to someone. Um, now, there are definitely are challenges with this. Um, I think one of the major challenges that is not called out enough is that even though they're there are a lot of companies that are giving you a plug and play opportunity to, to experiment with CPAS. Uh, a lot of these providers are actually only offering a very minimal amount of APIs. Uh, actually, one of the major market leaders really only hosts 13 APIs, and a lot of the others are actually much lower than that. That means you really are only manipulating basic level things, like the ability to connect to a phone number, essentially. Therefore, you may be able to plug and play um, in a matter of seconds, which is pretty cool, but functionality is limited. Um, and therefore, if you're building offerings based off functionality, these boundaries are gonna be set by the CPAS provider's APIs and the actions that they perform. And result, you maybe end up sacrificing quality for ease of use. And really, and given we're in a white label environment, Several of the recognized CPAS providers are actually white labeling others' technologies, leaving you questioning your technology's capabilities and the approach to high value components like geo redundancy, network quality, et cetera. Um, CPAS does offer versatility to businesses of all sizes, but does need at least some technical support and guidance. But really, the pros and cons aside, the CPAS market has grown from 400 million in 2015 to 8.1 billion in 2019 which is pretty incredible. I mean, the major concern to consider is, will you still be able to serve your customers at the level necessary with the limitations in the current C++ platforms? And that's something to keep in mind, obviously. So, next slide, please. So where are all these technologies headed? This is a question that every business leader is, or at least should be, asking themselves and their teams. History has shown us that over the past decade or so, service offerings and communication channels have rapidly evolved. Therefore, staying aligned with technology shifts and trends can help us be better prepared for the future. One thing is definitely for certain, cloud is our future. Next slide, please. Although some may not be ready to embrace it fully, all around us, cloud-based technologies are emerging every day. And as technology continues to grow, so does the delivery for how we use it. So cloud evolution does make sense, but really why? Why has the recent shift occurred? What has pushed us to the cloud? Well, I mean, to start installation barriers, old barriers that were set, installing, maintaining, upgrading the PBX or key systems at each customer premise, is very slow, complicated, and very expensive. This is a major burden for enterprises and has resulted in innovation and upgrade cycles up to 10 years even. 
I don't think anybody has the time for that. But now really with cloud-based system, this is no longer the case. Companies today are using cloud-centric technology, can really be spun up in a matter of minutes or days at the worst case. Um, some other influences, there were limits on system adaptation and innovative in integrations. Essentially, the flexibility to quickly adapt or integrate applications is a necessity. This is why most companies usually end up purchasing the next hot trend, including buyout out hosted cloud companies or others. It's easier, but in the end, it's not going to really solve the problem. Security is obviously the hot topic with cloud. That's one thing I hear at a lot of events, and a lot of folks is they're probably number one concern. On-premise solutions don't offer the same security and reliability as hosted services do, and that used to be a concern. However, hosted PBX is becoming more accepted um, and definitely more watched. Because security is such a main issue, a lot of technologies are making security their number one focus. Um, really, according Gartner was one that quoted, larger businesses usually, companies over about 1,000 employees or so, um, have traditionally preferred a separate software instance because of perceived security integration and customization, customization benefits, which is crazy because all you're doing is just adding more and more technologies on top of one another. And I think one of the most important things, and I think this is also going to vary from business to business, but is the redundancy and reliability. In most cases, geo-redundancy can only be truly offered in a hosted solution. I mean, I'm sure you could host an on-prem solution in three parts of the country, but the cost and the workload, workload for that alone would be super intense. So all of these items and more really created a demand for greater agility, lower cost, and speed to market, and ensuring that you can provide rich feature sets for your customers. Next slide, please. So leading analysts, bloggers, veteran industry leaders, they're all focused on how current technologies are evolving. Um, you can go and research all this stuff. I live for it, so it's always exciting to me. Uh, but we're definitely seeing in the world that you see there's transformations every day. Um, the growth is only just beginning. So this is really a time to get involved in the show. Um, Gardner is another one I go to a lot, but essentially they explain the transition from on-premise based UC to cloud-based UC is accelerating. And like you can see in the chart, um, the projection is for 2022, we're really getting up into the 20 billions um, because this trajectory is gaining momentum, which is really exciting. Uh, next slide, please. So we talked about, or I mentioned true integration. And we talk about integration across platforms, but true integration is what we want to focus on. Really, with the growth of these cloud-based solutions, uh, there came a demand for things to be integrated and not just clunk together. Um, it's pretty common in the market to have folks that are buying different companies and different features, and they're just clumping together different technologies to provide this offering, but creating a ton of work for themselves. Um, but essentially, we're hitting a large shift in the UCAS technologies, where we're seeing them actually starting to get into the CPaaS space because they're realizing the benefits of both of these systems and approaches. In most cases, these two systems are then integrated to offer almost a UCAS meets CPaaS experience. But the problem with this is essentially these are two different technologies. We're trying to get away from clumping together. So we really sort of want to start focusing on a truly integrated product. And essentially, if user experience is a high priority, which I'm hoping is the case for most of you, um, offering products and services that enhance the business collaboration is a must. And really only having flexible and true integration will give you the capabilities to avoid these issues. Uh, next slide, please. So I just mentioned UCAS meets CPAS, and this is from early in the year, and there's actually been several other uh, acquisitions and mergers that have taken place. But you're starting to see this trend. Um, and if you haven't noticed this yet, then definitely start to pay attention. A lot of these companies that were focused on just the UCAS offerings um, are starting to see the value and the need and flexibility of these APIs and CPaaS. Um, this is a really exciting shift because it shows that we're heading in the right direction. Um, however, <laughs> this still is going to take some time. You're still blending two systems. There's a lot of work that's going to come around it. Thank you. All right. So essentially, as these technology shifts 
take the market by storm. It's clear that the resellers and service providers alike are questioning how to evolve their business. Many have invested their technologies and are stuck between trying to target cap and grow opportunities, evolve through costly means, or lose competitive edge in the market. This is where market research and evaluation can really help you identify what's vital for your future success. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So I highly encourage deep-rooted market analysis, and I wouldn't just stick with Gardner and those big guys. Really pay attention to the different analysts in the market. Talk to a lot of the folks that you attend at, uh, that attend the events. Um, some may be competitors, some may be partners, um, but really understanding what the pros, the cons, the challenges they face is highly important. Uh, know what's happening. Uh, don't just rely on sales teams from companies to tell you about what the platform does. Try to find real-time information, use cases, learn firsthand about the challenges. Remember, no single document can tell you without qualifications what the best software development model for your organization is to adopt. So really dive into what's out there. And knowing your business and how it aligns with the market is key. Understanding your budget, your revenue targets, and your major competitive threats are obviously really important. Technology is your first and foremost, and as we were walking through, you kind of understand there's a variety of things to choose from, but knowing the strengths and weaknesses of each will help you better align what's going to actually work for you at this time and what's going to help you grow to the next level. Next slide, please. All right, so let's get into something fun. So, since the future of innovation is actually CPAS and UCAS combined, and the challenges fall into the fact that a lot of these are merged technologies, there's something cool that 2600 Hertz is doing. The product that we work with is called Fizzoo. It's an API-based API open core platform that has the functionality of both of these platforms already in one system. So you can utilize our CPaaS components, which would be things like web sockets and web hooks, allowing you to manipulate these APIs. Um, but then you also have the same functionality as a lot of the UCAS offerings, Smart PBX, Call Center, Operator Pro, um, which is pretty incredible. I mean, I don't really know too many other companies that are doing this with one platform. Mergers and acquisitions, maybe, um, but a true homegrown platform that offers all of the above um, is pretty incredible and far above the market. Next slide, please. So I'll tell you a little bit more about us. Essentially, Kazoo uh, offers both shared and private server control. So not only can we offer hosted services for smaller businesses, but you can also run in your own server. That way you can run your business at your own preference. We actually offer 95 APIs. Um, that's pretty incredible. As I mentioned earlier, one of the leading CPaaS providers only offers 13 APIs. Granted, you can manipulate these APIs in various functions, copy, delete, edit, um, but you're still stuck with those 13. Getting up to almost 100 here at 2600 Hertz is pretty incredible. There's so many things that haven't been touched upon, so it really opens a door for creativity and creating a future of your own. We are truly geo-redundant. Uh, the Kazoo platform uh, essentially was created over multiple databases with a multi-master framework. Um, as compared to most other systems, that complain they claim redundancy, um, but they're really offering you a, a hot backup, which is a replica, only one replica of a primary soft switch. Kazoo actually offers a truly redundant platform, ensuring each database controls a primary replica, allowing any server to receive and satisfy requests, even if it's not directly hosted in that data center. That way, if one or even two databases go down, the running databases can still handle all the data and all the traffic. That's pretty awesome. And essentially, Kazoo is flexible to your business. Um, we can package it and bundle it like a core dial. Um, you can utilize it like a broad soft. There's so much versatility with the platform that you can really pick and choose your functionality, the way you run it, and how you want to grow and scale. We also offer both class four and class five functionality. I know in some cases, some uh, service providers will provide you the feature rich sets, but they won't, you have to go and actually purchase an SBC for, to continue your functionality. And you're kind of in the same situation where you're blending a bunch of technologies. We actually provide all of those uh, technologies in one platform. So you don't have to go other places to get what you need. 
And in addition, we also have a variety of services. So everything pro from provisioning, our business mobile solution, uh, support services, uh, you can essentially continually enhance your platform at any point in time. Next slide, please. So to give you just a little brief visual understanding, I know this looks very complex <laughs> and a lot of information, um, but this market is a bit complicated. Uh, there are so many pieces and I don't think a lot of folks realize it until you actually get into it and your customers are actually are asking for this functionality and you realize the platform that you're currently running doesn't provide that. So understanding all these pieces is, is fairly important. Um, and knowing that a lot of these providers that are offering CPaaS or UCAS solutions may not really providing you with everything that you need. Uh, next slide, please. So for example, um, this is a sample of a CPaaS solution um, that offers a full suite of CPaaS functionality. Um, but when you actually dive in a little bit deeper, uh, there's a lot of things that they don't provide. And it's something that you're going to realize when your customer asks for it and you can't deliver, which is not a situation you want to be in. Uh, next slide. And as another example, this is actually a UCAS provider, uh, where they are also saying we have a complete collaboration suite that we can offer you. However, they are very limited on what they're actually providing. So be careful when you start listening to a complete solution or collaboration services. Start really asking about the in-depth functionality that you need. Start listening to your customers about the things that they want and the different things in the market that are emerging and start inquiring about how you can get those hot new items into your technology. And if you are unable to, then start looking for technologies that you're actually able to grow and scale with. Oh, next slide, please. So, but really with great technology and trying to tackle the user and the customer experience from all angles is hard. This is why building a strong and reliable partner network is key. Even if you have technology that does offer true integration, services continue to unfold and evolve in front of our eyes every single day. So ensuring you find key partners that deliver the value add to your customer journey is one of the most imperative things you can do. Uh, we work with obviously Rev.io, which is a fantastic piece for us, because billing is something that we actually don't have on our system, but it is something that is necessary for all businesses, no matter the size. Um, but establishing this relationship, making it complementary to our platform, users can essentially add this in and create the all-in-one and all-inclusive platform that they need. Also partnering with folks like Polycom and Yealink for devices, Telnix and others for carrier services, and then also GSA for tax and compliance. Just keeping your partner net worth healthy um, is definitely a key. Next slide, please. So just a few takeaways to consider as we finish up today. Uh, so definitely do your homework. Know the foundation of your technology and the vision of your future. Um, and obviously cloud is shifting to the future. So start planning for it, do your homework. I know some folks are apprehensive, um, but given that security is such a major issue, we see a lot of these breach challenges that companies like Google and Facebook are facing. A lot of companies and a lot of technologies are focused on these security issues. So cloud will be continuing to gain momentum and stability. And all these as a service offerings are merging. It's definitely a new approach to market demand. Uh, so don't get caught up in clunking a bunch of systems together. Try to look for opportunities where you can actually cap and grow. So you're not replacing your systems, but you're building upon. And then as you make that momentum, you can look into replacing systems. Make it easy for yourself, so. And definitely build a strong partner ecosystem. That will help you maintain your customer relationships and ensure if there's any pieces that you're maybe missing, you can easily add in so customers are always happy and they feel valued. And that is it. And thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you'd like to connect with us and learn more, uh, you can reach out to us at contact at 2600hertz.com. If you have any questions for sales just around the platform, you can reach sales at 2600hertz.com. Um, if you have any questions about marketing materials or want to talk with our team anymore, uh, we can be reached at marketing at 2600hertz.com. Um, and we are available on all social channels. So we encourage you to come check us out. And Great. if there are any 
questions, I'd love to answer them. Great, thank you so much, Miriam. Um, and I, we really appreciate your time and also thank you to our audience for joining us today. Um, before we begin the Q&A portion of the presentation, I'd like to go over just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, the first is that we're already, always interested in topics that you'd like to learn more about, so please submit any topic ideas that you have um, or any questions about this webinar through the questions box in the GoToWebinar control panel. And um, the full webinar recording will be emailed to you within two weeks. Um, so now I'd like to ask um, a couple of questions from our audience. The first is, um, are there any situations where you would recommend for someone to stay on premise? Yes, I think if you have a, if you're a larger service provider, and obviously you've invested a lot of time into your solutions, um, a lot of money into your solutions, I don't think you're gonna be raising your hand to, to go look for a new technology. Um, so I think maintaining the technology you have is key, but uh, to ensure that you're kind of sticking with trends and maintaining momentum, I think uh, looking at cap and grow opportunities is definitely kind of fulfilling that need to stay and keep the momentum, um, but also allowing you not to have to replace these systems where you've made these investments. Okay, great. Um, how quickly can Kazoo be implemented if I'm looking to switch and what is the experience like? So Kazoo, well, it's kind of experience on its own, um, but it's, it's similar to a lot of the hosted bundles. So it's kind of a plug and play opportunity. Um, it, we can have it up in a matter of days, really, but we are kicking live a self-service component of our hosted solution um, in just a matter of weeks. Uh, so in, in essence, over the next few weeks, you'll be able to get up and going within a day or so. Awesome. Mm -hmm. This next question is, how concerned should I be about security in the cloud and what can I do to ensure my company's information is safe if I do make the move to go to the cloud? Well, I think security is a major thing. Um, I think there's really no 100% way to secure yourself against it just because we're kind of in that day and age where we're building into the cloud. So we're still kind of okay. finalizing this. Um, however, you're up to date and you're using utilizing functions like duo, duo um, and just single sign-on, um, ensuring that you're focused on your customer's privacy. Um, those are all things that you want to put kind of first and foremost in, in your site. Um, but I also think, like I mentioned before and earlier, security is such a major topic in the industry right now that people are jumbling to make sure that it's a top priority and enhancing and refining these different solutions to make sure that you're protected. So you'll probably see, I would say, um, over the next six months or so or beyond, um, more security type uh, features and programs and solutions or add-ins that you have, can utilize uh, to ensure that your, your cloud is, is safe, essentially. All right, um, and here's another one for you. If my top priority is redundancy, is UCAS better than unified communications, and how so? Sorry, could you repeat that one more time? Sure, if my pr top priority is redundancy, is UCAS better than unified communications, and how, if so? I would say, I would probably go with UCAS as a redundancy. I think we kind of talked about redundancy earlier where there's a lot of issues right now where a lot of folks are saying that they're redundant um, when they're really not. Um, they're utilizing hot backups. And this is the majority, I would say, the UCAS space is really where I hear it more. Um, but if you can actually find, and I don't, I'm not trying to push the zoo, um, but if you can find a technology that is actually not just doing um, a single hot backup, but actually ensuring that each data center is able to uh, write and copy and save um, kind of in its own individual self. Um, that would be kind of the ideal approach to take. All right, great. And then I think we have time for one last question. Um, so this question is, does Kazoo include E911 and C-A-L-E-A, -E or is that with the carrier partner? No, nope, that is actually something that we provide um, in our services. All right, great. 
Um, well, again, Miriam, thank you so much for your time today. Um, we really appreciate having you join us for our co-branded webinar series. Um, and if you have any other questions, you can always reach out to 2600 Hertz or RevIO directly. Um, and until then, we will see you next time. Um, thanks so much. Thank you.